Welcome to Organic Chemistry. This is part two for Chemisode on Organic Chemistry and it is about organic reactions. So reactions involving organic molecules. This is a very simplified one, so it's a bit simpler than the year 12 one. This is for year 11. So let's have a look at organic reactions in organic chemistry. <music> Today we're going to look at three types of organic reactions or reactions involving organic materials and that is combustion of organic compounds, so the burning of organic compounds, what gets formed when you burn something, how it gets burnt and um, the two different types of combustion reactions we can have. The second one is to do with cracking, so that is breaking large hydrocarbons down into smaller ones. And the last one is about addition reactions. So that's reactions involving alkenes. So the breaking of a double bond and adding stuff into it. Let's have a look, first of all, at the combustion reactions involving organic molecules. So basically, this is a reaction involving any type of hydrocarbon. Combustion means you're reacting it with oxygen. And we have two types of combustion. One's complete combustion. The other one is incomplete combustion. Now complete combustion, it shows there that the products will be carbon dioxide and water. So if you completely combust something, it will react with enough oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. An example of that is the reaction of methane in your um, Bunsen burners. When you're burning your Bunsen burner, what's happening is methane is being burnt in oxygen and it's producing your carbon dioxide and water. This happens when you have enough oxygen to burn something really well. Um, an incomplete combustion can happen when you haven't got enough oxygen in your system. It means that the, um, the reaction is still going, the reaction is still happening, but there's not a lot of oxygen to keep it going very well. Um, this happens generally in broken appliances, so your broken gas heaters and stuff like that. If they're not working properly, what can happen is you can produce carbon monoxide. So an example of that is methane again, natural gas um, that you're, you might be burning in your, in your um, home. If your heater is not working properly, if your um, heater is not doing the right thing, you may have heard that it can produce some carbon monoxide. This is due to not having enough oxygen to completely combust your methane. So the incomplete combustion forms carbon monoxide and water. The complete combustion forms carbon dioxide and water. Carbon monoxide is a very, very dangerous and um, gas for us as humans. Basically, if we breathe carbon monoxide in, what happens is that it really links up really well with our blood and it transports that, our blood transports the carbon monoxide around our body instead of oxygen. So this can actually um, basically make us asphyxiate, so make us suffocate if we take in too much carbon monoxide. So what we really want is complete combustion happening um, and not so much incomplete combustion. If we're going to burn something, we want it to burn with enough oxygen to really combust it well. Obviously, with writing combustion reactions, you need to balance your equations. And I've got two balanced equations here um, for the complete, which is the first one, and the incomplete. Obviously, balancing chemical equations is very, very important. Every time you write a chemical equation, you really need to check that it is balanced. And um, I'm not going to explain how to do that now. You should know how to do balancing chemical equations. If you can't, YouTube a clip to tell that it will explain you how to do that. But that's combustion. That's our first type of reaction. You've got complete and incomplete. Our next type of reaction um, is cracking. Cracking is breaking a large hydrocarbon into smaller ones. Basically, um, what how you do it is you run it over a catalyst. Um, I think it's like nickel or something like that. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, you run it over some type of catalyst. I can't remember what, exactly what it is. And what happens is the, the um, large hydrocarbon breaks down into two smaller ones. Our example here is we have decane. So obviously decane means 10 um, carbons and 22 hydrogens. If we break this down, we get two smaller molecules. We get, first of all, a butene and a hexene. So this is just an example of what could happen. 
The main thing you need to understand is when we do some cracking, what happens is you get one alkene, so one double bonded um, hydrocarbon, and a one with a single bond only. So cracking is breaking a large hydrocarbon into smaller ones, and what happens if you start off with the normal uh, hydrocarbon, which is an alkane, so all single bonds, when you crack that hydrocarbon, what happens is you get an alkene with a double bond and an alkane together. So it produces one alkene and one alkane in the cracking process. All right, um, that's cracking. Um, going through this pretty quickly. The next one is addition reactions, and these are the ones that involve alkenes. Alkenes have your double bond, and in an addition reaction, what happens, the double bond will break and things will attach at each end of that double bond. There's a few different reactions that can happen, um, and I'll go through some of these now. So here we have um, and the really simple ones, just your diatomical molecules, so Br2, Cl2, H2, I2. What happens when you break your double bond in this instance, if we have an addition reaction where you're adding in these molecules, what happens is one half goes on one carbon, the other half goes on the other carbon. So in the case of adding Br2, bromine, to our hydrocarbon, one end of the double bond gets the Br, the other one gets the other Br. If we had to do chlorine, one end would get chlorine, the other one would get chlorine as well. So that's your simple adding of diatomical molecules to it. So adding on things that have um, just two molecules which are the same, two atoms which are the same. Our second one is where we're adding in something like hydrochloric acid. Now hydrochloric acid has HCl. When we're adding it to a double bond, what we can imagine, the double bond will break, half of this HCl will go on one side, so the hydrogen goes on this side, and half of it will go on the other side. Okay, I've got another slide which goes in a more detailed example of these as well, but this is just an idea of how some of the examples of addition reactions. If you're adding water in, what happens is you get a hydrogen on one end and an OH on the other end. So this adding of water is a way to change an alkene into an alcohol. So a way to create an alcohol from an alkene. Um, what I've got here is um, phosphoric acid and a 300 degrees Celsius. This is the type of conditions that you need to have for this reaction to happen. The last type of addition reaction is where you're making a polymer, and that's basically adding lots and lots of alkenes together. Another podcast will be done explaining polymers. But I'll show you a couple of examples of addition reactions and how we can write what the addition reactions look like. Here are two examples. Um, first of all, we have propane reacting with bromine. So bromine is Br2. So here we have um, propane, uh, obviously prop means three, ene means it's got a double bond. And if we're adding bromine to this, what we're gonna end up with is breaking this double bond and one Br on one end, another Br on the other end. So it's gonna look like this. So our product will be one, two dibromopropane. So we've broken our double bond and we add in a Br on either end. So this bromine, gets snapped in half and one end goes on one carbon, the other goes on the other carbon. And it's always the carbons that are to do with this double bond here. And next example is butanoin reacting with hydrochloric acid. So butanoin, as you can see here, but means four, one ene means the double bond is between the first and second carbons. If we're reacting with this hydrochloric acid, what's gonna happen is this double bond's gonna break a H is going to go on one end of the double bond, and the Cl is going to go on the other, kind of like this, and we form 2-chlorobutane. So this is one product of this reaction. However, if you can imagine, what happens if the chlorine goes on the first carbon and the hydrogen goes on the second, instead of the other way around like we have here? That can happen as well. So what we actually get when we're doing these reactions is we get um, two chlorobutane or one chlorobutane forming. Okay, Both of these will be formed from the same reaction. So if you're going to draw the products of an addition reaction, 
you also need to think about do I need to draw more than one product? Is it possible that I've draw, I have to draw more than one product? And that's the case when you're reacting things with hydrochloric acid or you're reacting it with water. You can imagine that when you're putting two different things on either end, it can happen that way. So there are examples of addition reactions where you break a double bond and you put one part of the molecule you're reacting on one side and the other one on the other side. Addition reactions is where you're snapping a double bond and adding stuff in. And that's pretty much why they're called addition reactions, because you're adding stuff to the alkene that you're reacting. The last slide is about addition reactions again, and it's a thing called saturation, a test for saturation. Now, saturation is to do with how many double bonds a molecule has. Now, a saturated hydrocarbon, or a saturated molecule, has only single bonds. So alkanes are saturated. These guys can't react or can't undergo addition reactions because you've got no double bonds to break. Unsaturated means you have a double bond in there. An unsaturated hydrocarbon means you can add stuff to it. Okay, think about saturated, you can't add anything to it. Unsaturated, you can add stuff because it's got a double bond there. A test for saturation is to add red bromine water to your hydrocarbon and see if you get a reaction happening. Bromine is Br2, so if you are reacting it with a saturated hydrocarbon, you, nothing's going to happen. Red bromine water is going to stay this reddy orange color. How if, however, if you're reacting it with an unsaturated hydrocarbon, your bromine water will go clear. And this is a test to see if you have a double bond. Because if you have that double bond, your bromine is going to react and it's going to form clear um, bromohydrocarbons. So, an addition reaction can be used to test for saturation. The addition reaction you use is bromine water because you see a distinct difference in colour. If it's red, it's saturated because it hasn't reacted. The red bromine water has stayed red. If it goes clear, it's an unsaturated hydrocarbon. So that means the reaction has actually occurred and changed the red bromine or it reacted all of the red bromine and it's become clear. So that's how you can test for saturation. And that's what saturation means. Saturated, no double bonds. Unsaturated has at least one double bond. You can imagine monounsaturated mono has one double bond, polyunsaturated means they have many double bonds. So you can think about saturation in terms of that. But your test for saturation, I'll say it again, is your red bromine water. If it goes clear, it's unsaturated because it had double bonds for it to react with. And that's the end of this podcast or this video. The next one will be, as I said, on making polymers and naming polymers and breaking polymers up. Um, and that will hopefully be finished very, very shortly as well. So take it easy um, and keep on studying.